Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2015 Subaru BRZ Series Blue. This is a two-door coupe with four seats and as mentioned this particular trim is the Series Blue, one of just a thousand for the U.S. market. The Series Blue features front, side, and side rear under spoilers as well as functional underbody panels which reduce the coefficient of drag from 0.28 to 0.27. Up front, fog lights and daytime running lights with the shark fin antenna on top. MSRP for the BRZ starts under $26,000 with this particular trim coming in at $30,285. Checking out the trunk, it is fairly small. Uh, that said, you can fold down the rear seats for some additional space in there. And then underneath you have your spare as well as tools. Okay, let's have a look under the hood. So overall things are looking pretty good here. You don't have obnoxious engine covers. You've got this flat boxer engine which is tucked down real low and then also towards the driver. So from a weight distribution point of view, very good keeping the center of gravity low. This vehicle actually has an extremely low center of gravity at about 18 inches. Uh, so looking around here at some other things as far as serviceability, you've got the battery on the passenger side tucked back as far as possible. Also great from a weight distribution point of view and it's also very accessible so I like that. You've got these strut braces here for additional rigidity of the chassis. You have your fuse box right here with a single quick tab to open that and access. You've got your radiator cap and coolant fill. You've got your engine oil dipstick alternator right up here on top. You've got your engine oil filter right up on top, extremely convenient. Engine oil fill, windshield washer fluid fill, quick tabs to get to your air filter, your brake fluid, and then here your clutch fluid. So essentially the same engine that you'll find in the Subaru WRX except with no turbocharger and a higher compression ratio. This is a four cylinder horizontally opposed engine, aluminum block and heads, dual overhead cams, four valves per cylinder, variable valve timing on both the intake and the exhaust, a compression ratio of 12.5 to one. It features direct and port fuel injection. This engine produces 200 horsepower at 7,000 RPM and 151 pound-feet of torque at 6,400 RPM. And coming in at 100 horsepower per liter, this is the highest specific output of any of the naturally aspirated engines that I've tested and it has a 7,400 RPM redline. Now following the path of the intake air, we've got our air filter here up front which is pulling from the front. It's got a resonator here on the left and then it looks like something which maybe is uh, piping in some induction noises to the cabin. Uh, the air passes to an electronically controlled throttle body which is located right here, splits between the four cylinders in this intake manifold, then heads back in a 421 exhaust. So the exhaust travels to the rear through a single pipe where it then enters the muffler and then is split between one of two tailpipes. Engine power is sent from a six-speed manual transmission to a Torsen limited slip differential in the rear, powering the rear wheels. These are 17-inch special STI wheels for the Series Blue. These are actually the lightest wheels and tire of any vehicle I've tested yet, coming in just over 38 pounds. They're about eight pounds lighter per wheel and tire than the Subaru WRX. Both front and rear wheels wrapped in Michelin 215 over 45 tires. Up front, 11.6 inch ventilated disc brakes matched with dual piston calipers. These are painted red, same color as fire trucks in the US, so I'm guessing these brakes have pretty good cooling as well. This is matched with a McPherson strut style suspension. You can see here the steering linkage, the anti-roll bar which is connecting up with the strut, and everything is pretty much painted or coated to prevent rust. 11.4 inch ventilated disc brakes in the rear with single piston calipers. This is matched with a double wishbone style suspension. On the left here you can see the toe adjustment, the lower control arm there and the upper control arm up here. Checking the other side you can see the coil over shock absorber, the anti-roll bar there behind, fairly small at 14 millimeters and then the control arm there at the bottom. Now this rear suspension has anti-lift geometry whereas the front suspension had anti-dive geometry. Now once again everything painted or coated to prevent rust and then in the center here you can see the drive axle coming in. So let's check out the interior. Keyless entry to unlock the vehicle. Simply grab the door handle and you can open it and then to lock it you also have a button on the outside. The Series Blue features a leather and Alcantara trimmed interior with blue highlights and stitching. So sitting in the interior, these seats really well bolstered, uh, pretty snug in here, but they're actually really comfortable as well. They've got a nice amount of cushion to them. They remind me quite a bit of the seats 
in my STI that I have. Uh, as far as legroom, plenty of legroom up front, plenty of adjustability in the steering wheel. Uh, perhaps you might be able to bring it a little bit closer to you. That'd be kind of nice for taller people. Uh, but aside from that, uh, everything in here pretty good as far as space. You also have leather cushion uh, on both the left and right side, so where both of your knees may come into contact is soft touch, leather, and cushioned. You've got automatic windows left and right. Uh, you can adjust your mirrors here electronically. You've got your trunk release and you can adjust the brightness of your display as well as the level of your front lights. Now, as far as the steering wheel, very straightforward, very simple, leather wrapped, feels pretty good to the touch. And you know, no controls on it. It's just very straightforward to the point. This is a driver's car. I personally do like controls on steering wheels. I think it allows you to keep your eyes on the road and not necessarily worry about messing around over here. Uh, but that said, I do admire the simplicity of this. Uh, you've got your light controls on the left and your windshield controls on the right for your windshield wipers. The display, you know, somewhat um, basic up here. You've just got your tack uh, and speedometer and then your fuel gauge and your coolant temperature. Uh, and other than that, it's just pretty much very straightforward. You do have a little computer uh, down here which you can select between different things, outside temperature, instantaneous fuel economy, your average fuel economy. And so some different things to look through in that. Uh, and you can also switch between miles per hour and kilometers per hour if you want to improve your zero to 60 time. Now, moving on to the infotainment system. This is a very basic setup, uh, but it does everything you need it to do. You can connect up your phone. You've got Bluetooth control uh, and you have navigation on it. Other than that, pretty straightforward. It does have a CD slot. And then down here, you've got your climate controls with kind of a, you know, sporty feel to them. This little, these little push down buttons, uh, which are kind of cool. Uh, and then you've got your fan adjustment there for the speed. And then you do have two uh, climate zones, which you can change between. So kind of nice. And then of course you have this engine push stop start button. Now moving beyond the gear shift, you've got some buttons here, which I am a fan of. So you can turn your traction control off here with a single touch, uh, but that doesn't actually seem to do much if you just do a single touch, then it just turns the traction control on the second you start to lose traction, which kind of defeats the purpose. Um, and so then if you hold it, you can actually turn it all the way off. So if you're going to a track or something like that and you want to get totally sideways, uh, you can do that by holding this button down. You also have this sport button, which is kind of a nice uh, in-between area where it does let you kick the rear end out a little bit, but it doesn't get it, let it get too scary. You know, it just, just enough to make it a little bit fun. Uh, and then it'll sort everything out and keep you going in your intended path. So that's what I like to drive it on. It's pretty fun with that. You do have these heated seats right here. And then also uh, you've got this little center compartment. It does have this kind of removable cup holder, which you can adjust and put in different locations. Um, it's not 100% secure. You know, it kind of does wobble in there a little bit, depending on where you have it. So not exactly uh, the most robust design, but, uh, you know, you can take it out and you've got a nice little storage compartment there and then put it in. And I'm sure if you have the weight of drinks in there, you know, it's not going to be kind of wandering around. So it's okay. And then you do have this 12 volt power outlet in there as well. You also have a USB and auxiliary cable connections up here. And, you know, one of the things that I do like is the steering wheel, the gear shift, and the emergency brake are all in the same plane. So you're pretty much just in this plane right here, uh, and it's very easy to switch between them. I think that was definitely intentional. You know, you're going into a corner, you can yank that up and be right on the gear shift or the steering wheel right immediately after. So it is kind of nice the way they have this set up, definitely with the driver in mind. And then, of course, you do have a glove compartment over here on the right. Now, as far as visibility, looking out the front and looking to the sides is fine. Looking at the rear, not too bad. Good large window back there. Checking your blind spot, it is a bit cramped, so not really much visibility here. But that said, it's a pretty small vehicle, so you can just kind of lean forward, give a quick glance, and you can see what's in your blind spot. You also do have this frameless mirror, which I do find to be quite nice, a uh, nice modern look to it, so I do like that. Now, as always, I will attempt to get into the rear seats. As you can see, there's not really any room for legs or feet or anything like that. But regardless, we're going to move this seat up uh, and come back here. Now, sitting in the front seat, I actually have plenty of headroom, uh, even though I am 6'1". So I, I do have to admire that, the fact that I can sit up in the front. You can see this kind of arch, so you do have plenty of headroom as the driver. Uh, sitting in this back seat here is not really possible. Um, as you can see... The seat comes right up to the back of the seat, so there's not really any point to these rear seats. You know, this is going to be a car for up to two people. You can fold this down. You can have a decent amount of cargo space back here. And then you've got a nice little practical coupe for two. Okay, let's go for a test drive. Go ahead and put it in sport. 
So let's just kind of talk through the different systems in here, uh, starting with the clutch. So the clutch pedal, uh, it has a little bit of travel towards the end where it's not actually doing anything once it's already disengaged. So it's not that similar to the WRX or the STI uh, where the full clutch pedal travel is actually doing something. Uh, it's more towards the end. That said, you still do have control with it. It's not bad. You just don't have quite the range that you do in the WRX or the STI. Now, the gear shift itself is actually uh, fairly notchy, feels very similar to the WRX or the STI, where you just kind of have this kind of clunky feel as you put it into gear shifts. Uh, good and bad with that. Good is uh, you really have this uh, good sensation of you know it's in gear. Bad, it just doesn't feel all that smooth. Um, and it's something I like about my WRX STI, but it's something that I could definitely see uh, being somewhat irritating to someone if you wanted it to be a little bit more smoother of a transition. Now, the throttle pedal I actually really do like. Very responsive. You don't have any play with it. You know, the second you're on it, it starts accelerating. And the other thing is it doesn't have rev hang like you have with the WRX. Uh, so when you are shifting gears, you can do it very quickly uh, and you don't have to worry about the RPMs dropping. They just drop the second you let off uh, the gas versus in the WRX where they kind of hung up there a little bit uh, and stayed up so you'd have to wait a decent amount if you wanted a smooth shift. With this you can get very smooth shifting very quickly. Now moving on to the steering and this is probably one of the strongest points of this vehicle. Uh, phenomenal steering. You have a very short steering ratio so you don't have to turn the wheel all that much to get the vehicle to turn much and it's also extremely responsive so the second you start turning in it starts to turn. In some vehicles you kind of notice a delay between turning the wheel and the vehicle turning. This one you don't notice a delay. It's very responsive. Tight steering ratio which makes it feel really good in the corners. Uh, phenomenal overall. So we're going to come up to some corners right here, pop it down into second, and we'll go through this. And so as I mentioned, I've got that BSC on sport, so it allows for a little bit of slip uh, for the rear tires. This thing is seriously fun in these tight corners. This is what this car was made for, these really small, low speed corners. You can press the throttle down and get the rear to kick out a little bit with it in sport mode, uh, and you just can't help but smile while you're doing it. It's seriously fun. Coming up on another corner here, really low body roll. Even though this vehicle has the smallest anti-roll bars, front and rear, of any of the vehicles that I've tested. There we go. It really doesn't roll, and that's due to a couple things. First, it's really lightweight, so we can get away with smaller anti-roll bars. The second thing is, it also has a really low center of gravity, and so that really helps uh, in order to minimize roll. Now, compared to the other vehicles on my channel, this vehicle is a lot of firsts. It's the lightest weight vehicle at under 2,800 pounds. It's the shortest vehicle in length and in height, so it's a pretty small vehicle. It has the lowest drag coefficient of any of the vehicles I've tested, and it has the highest horsepower per liter of any of the naturally aspirated engines that I've tested. So it's a very purpose-built vehicle uh, for these kind of environments, and it just does phenomenal in these corners. It's just so much fun to drive. Okay, let's try and get a quick highway pull in. I will turn off the traction control and hopefully I just don't smoke the tires and we actually get a usable run out of this. If I botch it, I'm sorry. So I'm going to go ahead and straighten out, come to a stop, bring the revs a little over 2,000. So you can hit 60 in a second gear. And so I will take the time that it took from zero to the end of second gear, and that essentially is 60, and then we'll bring it up to highway speeds here. I'll set the cruise control at 65, and you probably are already noticing that you do get a decent amount of noise in this cabin. It's not the quietest interior. You're looking at about 81, 82 decibels, which is definitely on the louder end of the vehicles that I've tested, uh, and that's just kind of one of the trade-offs of, you know, removing weight from a vehicle. You're going to get something that gets a little bit more noise in it. And so you do have a decent amount of tire noise and a little bit of wind noise as well. Now, this vehicle is priced very similarly to the WRX. So it makes you ask the question, you know, if you're going to go for a performance vehicle and practicality and all-wheel drive aren't necessarily a need um, because you can fit more people and more stuff in the WRX, obviously, and it has all-wheel drive. 
which one is more fun to drive. Uh, and they're both very fun in their own ways. There's something about this vehicle where it's just incredibly lightweight, and so that just makes it so responsive. And you don't quite get that responsiveness in the WRX, which is about 500 pounds heavier than this. So it is a really, really fun car to drive. The WRX, on the other hand, you've got that low-end torque with the twin-scroll turbocharger, so you're going to have this really fast vehicle. Uh, and so, you know, that's on the other end, you do have speed in the other one. So this is definitely more handling. The WRX is more overall speed, but not quite as good of handling. And, you know, they're both very different in that sense. Which one made me smile more while I'm driving it? Honestly, this one has, uh, and I think it's just the way that rear end behaves when you have it in sport mode. It just lets you play around a little bit, uh, and it's really, really fun to do. So I think both cars are phenomenal. Both cars are actually capable of pretty good gas mileage, and so I, I think neither of them are necessarily a bad choice, uh, and they're both very fun, so you know, pick kind of what you're more interested, straight line speed and decent handling, or not as much straight line speed uh, and very good handling. Handling, just really responsive uh, everything about this you know weight towards the center good distribution front to rear and just very responsive in the corner so it's an absolute blast to drive and it also kind of is a little bit tail happy which makes it fun as well now if you are trying to decide between the manual and the automatic and I'm not sure why you're asking that question uh, you should get the manual but if you are trying to decide between them uh, the automatic does have the benefit of slightly better gas mileage and this is due to two things it does have an automatic transmission fluid warmer uh, which heats it up so you can get a bit more efficiency from it and it also has uh, slightly uh, lower gear ratios and so that enables it to be at slightly lower rpms um, especially on the highway where it's rated for mpg better now that said the manual is cheaper it's 50 pounds lighter which may not sound like much but it's actually almost two percent of the vehicle's weight so it makes a difference the fact is the manual is the way to go with this vehicle it's a ton of fun and it would be my recommendation now I've completed my fuel economy test course. This is approximately 53 miles, primarily highway with some city and hills mixed in. This vehicle is rated 22 in the city, 30 on the highway. And as you can see, it achieved 38.1 miles per gallon on my test course. This is three miles per gallon better than the WRX that I tested, which isn't all that surprising considering that this is two wheel drive and is also significantly lighter. So one of the biggest complaints that pretty much everyone has about this car is that it's low on power. And it is kind of low on power. Uh, you know, it's not a tremendous amount and you're not gonna go flying when you put your foot down. That said, it's still plenty enough to get the rear tires to kick out. And it's plenty enough at low speeds where it does feel pretty good as far as how much acceleration it has. Now, I think there's two questions that I have to ask myself when I'm driving this. One, do I wish it had more power? And I think the answer is yes. You know, it's, it's kind of hard for me to say that for many vehicles that I wouldn't want them to have more power. And I definitely would want this to have a little bit more power. I think a little more straight line acceleration would make it uh, a little bit more fun. That said, you know, this is a tremendously fun car to drive. And I think one of the critical questions is, do I think that it's worth the money for how much power this has? And I absolutely do. This car is phenomenally fun to drive. You can kick out the rear end very easily uh, in first or second gear, and you can get excellent fuel economy. So it's kind of a little coupe that does it all as far as track performance. It's uh, super capable. If you want to modify it, go ahead and do it, and you'll have a monster of a car with a really great base set up as far as handling. And if you want to get great fuel economy, you can do that in this. So I do admire that about it. Uh, and I think the power level is perfectly adequate for its price range. It's a very fun car to drive uh, through these corners. And so I have to admire it for that and how purpose built it is. The fact that uh, finally a modern car is kept lightweight relative to other modern cars. And so ultimately I've really enjoyed driving this. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.